Our Lord is returning. Oh, shout hallelujah. Let's sing it. Our Lord is returning. Oh, shout hallelujah. Our blessed Redeemer is coming again. And when we shall see him, the King is chapter 24, Proverbs chapter 24 tonight. I want to preach you a very simple message because that's about the only kind I can preach. Uh, simple people do simple things. So uh, Proverbs chapter 24, if you will, and uh, we're just going to read three verses and uh, preach those three verses to you. Say amen. We can all go watch the lunar eclipse, all right? Amen. If the clouds don't cover it up. All right. And, and it's so bad. They advertise something. They push something. They push it. And you get you all excited and you go out in the clouds. You know, you can't see it. So say, so just be quiet, all right? Don't, don't tell us about it. Proverbs 24, if you would, in verse 10, the Bible says, If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. If thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death and those that are ready to be slain, if thou sayest, Behold, we knew it not, doth not he that pondereth the heart consider it, and he that keepeth thy soul doth not he know it, and shall not he render to every man according to his works? Heavenly Father, Lord, bless our time tonight in the word of God. Bless this service. Put your hand on these people. And Lord, use us to bring honor and glory to you. In your name I pray. Amen. I want you to notice three things. If you faint, if you forbear, and if you falsify. If you faint, if you forbear, and if you falsify. So where'd you get that last one? Well, that's what it's talking about there in verse 12. If thou sayest, behold, we knew it not, obviously the, 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 con, you know, the context here is you're not telling the truth. All right, that little word if. I, if, excuse me, that little word if begins all these verses. If, if has got a lot of potential in it. It's got a lot of possibilities. That little word if. You know, I've heard people say, well, if I just had this, and if I just had that, and then I've heard all my life, if wishes were horses, we'd all take a ride, you know? If, if. That little word if begins an introductory adverb clause. That's what it does. It's an interesting word. It's an interesting word. It speaks of possibility, but not necessarily probability. Not necessarily probability. If you take geometry, and those of you do, if you had it, you, you were blessed beyond measure to be able to take geometry. And if you haven't had it yet, it gives you something to look forward to in life. But there are theorems in geometry, and they usually start with if. Uh, oftentimes they will say, if this is true, then this is true. That if is the, the key part, all right? If. So I want to speak to you tonight on three ifs that will define you. Three ifs that will define you. Notice, first of all, if you faint. If you faint. Notice what that verse says. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. If you faint. The picture here is of a fellow who falls out or quits in the day of adversity. He's the one that bails out, all right? When the going gets tough, he bails. When it looks like it's going to be hard, I'm done. I'm done. I'm not going through that. Hey, if, if I've got to endure some hardship, well, I, I'm out of here. Yeah. I, I think of uh, popular Christianity in our day is made up of people who are attracted to a positive-only message and a message that promises everything. Hey, you know, if you'll live right, you'll live for God, you'll be healthy, you'll be wealthy, you'll have great...
great wisdom, boy, life's wonderful. That's just not true. Amen. That's just not true. As a matter of fact, uh, hey, it's easy to keep going. It's easy to keep serving. It's easy to keep on keeping on as long as there's not much in the way of opposition. Hey, that's all right. As long as there's not much opposition, it's easy to keep going. I mean, in whatever, whatever field you're in, all right, it's easy to keep going until you run into that, uh, that opposition. It's easy to roll when you're constantly going downhill. It's easy to push a car downhill. You've never done it. You ought to try it. It's easy to do that. Hey, uh, and those things that are easy to do, everybody will do them. We have no problem. No problem whatsoever. It, it's when the things get tough. It's when difficulties arise that we really find out what you're made of. Uh, man, in, years ago in the locker room at Carter Riverside High School, there was a, a sign that said, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Man, I don't know about you, but I've heard that over and over again, all right? But the truth is, that's the thing that's going to define you. Hey, not as a football player. I'm not interested in that, really. Not as, uh, you know, a weightlifter. Hey, but I'm interested in that if you as a Christian, as a child of God. I want to tell you, the Bible tells us that the child of God has been told to expect the adversary to provide some adversity. It will come. There, there's going to come some trouble. There's going to come some opposition. Folks, uh, uh, there, there's no doubt about it. In our land in which we live today, because of the changing morals in this country and, and the swing away from obedience and serving God and being faithful to God and, and sticking with the Word of God and we're, we're leaving our moorings as a nation which was founded on the principles in the Word of God and I don't care what anybody says that was true. That's right. Amen. Now you can rewrite the history books and erase that but it doesn't change the truth. Amen. That's what we were founded on. Our nation was not founded on the great principles of Buddhism. They just weren't. They were not founded on the great wise sayings of Confucius. It was not founded on the principles of the Quran. All right? It was founded on the principles of the Word of God. And because we're leaving that, God's people who are going to stick with the Bible and stick with God's Word, you can count on it there's adversity ahead. Now, I may not live to see it. Now, I believe the Lord's coming back. I believe He can come back tonight and hope He does. Amen. But if He doesn't, we don't know how long it's going to be out there. We think it's terrible. We think it's bad. But the Bible says it's God's business to decide when He'll return. Amen. Now, it may not face me, but it may affect you, you teenagers, you young people, you in those 20s and early 20s, you may face it. There may be some adversity down the road. I can remember speaking to teens years ago and saying, now listen, you probably, we don't have to worry about going to prison for your Bible beliefs. Well, that was a dumb thing to say. Because of the way we're going, you may have to. You may have to. Well, what are you going to do? Well, as I said, anybody can keep going, and anybody can keep rolling as long as you're rolling downhill. No problem. I, one of my favorite things to do as a kid is if we'd get some big appliance, maybe like a refrigerator, and we'd get it out of the box. But we always wanted to get it out of the box with the box intact. We didn't want to cut that box. We wanted to be able to lift the box off of it because, man, there was so much fun to be had inside that box. I, I mean, you know, it, it was better than a wagon. It's better than a bicycle. And uh, we, we got in. I remember years ago we'd get in that thing and we had a tank. The only problem was you could not see where you were going. There was absolutely no forward vision. You could look out the side and the end of the box, each end, but you had no idea what was in front of you. And it was all right. It was easy going as long as it's going downhill. But the problem is you'd be going downhill and it'd be rolling along. You'd be, you'd be hustling, trying to keep up on your hands and knees in that thing, crawling, and bam, you'd hit a tree. 
there was adversity. There was tough. Hey, listen, the truth of the matter is there's going to come some adversity in your life. Now, what are you going to do? The Bible said if you faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. What that means is you're a weakling. I don't know how any other way to put it. All right. Well, preacher, could you be gentle? You are one with not much strength. Does that sound better? Hey, you're just a weakling, all right? You can't take it. You're a, a wuss, they call them nowadays. You know, you're, I, I used to say pansy. You, you know, you just can't take anything. Hey, get tough. Amen. Get tough. We live in a day, though, where boys so many faint. They fall out when stuff gets tough. They fall out. Hey, they'll, they'll serve in the bus ministry until summer. They'll serve in the bus ministry until summer. And boy, in summer, it's hot. It's real hot in the bus. And uh, so people will stick it out until summer. Then they'll fall out. There, there's those that will stick with it, you know, until there's a little bit of opposition. Until somebody cusses them out and slams the door in their face. Well, I'm not doing that anymore. They've offended me. Boy, do you not think they offended the Lord Jesus Christ as he hung on that cross and they mocked him, they spit on him? And you and I get a little bit offended because somebody sticks their tongue out at us. Hey, the Bible said if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. It will define you as a weakling and as a quitter. There's the first if. Notice the second one in verse 11. Verse 11 says, If thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death and those that are ready to be slain. Now that word forbear means to hold back. It means to abstain. That's what it means. You, you hold back. You, you don't do, all right? The picture here is of one who does less than his best. You forbear. You, you hold back. Well, I'm saving something in reserve. I'm holding back on it. I abstain. Now, specifically, all right, it is to do less than your best at delivering folks from death. That's what the Bible says. If thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death. Preacher, are you saying we need to get a gang together, go down and break in the huntsville and get all those people off of death row? No. No. Well, do we need to go down to Tarrant County, the jail, those that have not been delivered yet to, Tarrant, uh, to the uh, prison who have been found guilty and they're worthy of death and they're waiting. We need to break them out. No. But there are some people that are about to die. There are some people that are about to go out into eternity without God. They're about to leave this world. They're in danger of meeting God unprepared. And the Bible says, if thou forbear to deliver them. If you don't do it, all right. Hey, well, I ask you this. If you don't do it, then bless God, who's going to do it? Well, let's give that job to somebody else. Well, somebody else doesn't want to do it either. If you hold back from doing your best, doing your best. Listen, giving it everything you've got. Everything you've got. Everything that's within you. All that is within you as a human being to give it to everything you've got to keep people from dying and going to hell. Now, that's what we're talking about. <coughs> if thou forbear. Hey, I believe God wants to do our best to keep everybody out of hell we can. I believe he wants our best. I, I don't believe he wants half-hearted effort. I believe he wants the best effort you've got. A hundred percent of you, all of your talent, all of your ability, all of your inability. I don't care. Use it. All right? Use it. Give it everything you've got. Why? Because there's people out there that are dying. They're dying. They're going to hell without Christ. Uh, it, it's not a fictionalized account. That's not a myth. It's actually happening. Yes, sir. 
And we believe if you die without trusting Christ as your Savior, you'll spend an eternity in hell. That's what the Bible teaches. We believe that. We believe it is a place of torment. We believe it is a place of fire. We don't believe it is a place just of separation from God. Uh, we believe, hey, you'll be eternally tormented in that flame. Now, if you don't give your best, if you don't give your best to keep people out of hell, that marks you as being a selfish and lacking compassion. You're selfish and lack compassion. Well, preacher, I just don't think it's that important. I just don't think it's that big. I mean, I, I don't know why we need to put any effort into that. Well, wait a minute. Uh, if hell's as bad as it says it is, if the Lord Jesus Christ would tell people, look, it's better for you to go through life maimed right. and halt right. without a hand, without an arm, without an eye, yes, than for you to die and go to hell with both of them. Right. I'm going to tell you something, hell's more than the grave. Yes, that Jehovah's Witness crowd that teaches hell is merely the grave. I don't know what they, if they can't read the, the plain English of the Word of God or what. But if you believe that, man, why worry about it? The truth of the matter is, why worry about it? If all you're going to do is die and that's it, you cease to exist, so be it. Hey, live it up. And go for everything you've got in this life. Don't worry about God. Don't worry about religion. Don't worry about Christianity. Don't worry about anybody except you. Live for you and give it all you've got because at the end of it, when you cease to exist, you die, you draw your last breath, that's it. You're done. If that's true, who cares? And I submit to you, if that's all there is to hell, well, it's not that bad a deal. It's not that bad a deal. The only problem is the Bible says there is a hell. There is a hell. It is real. And there are people dying going there. There are people dying and going there. While God's people have the truth, we have the truth of the Word of God. And God brings people across our path. God brings people into our lives, gives us the opportunity, and we hold back. I don't want to offend them. I don't want to offend them. I, I don't want them to think I'm some kind of religious nut. Well, you don't mind being another kind of nut. How come you don't want to be noted as being a religious nut? Hey, folks, people are dying and going to heaven. If thou forbear, if we hold back, if we hold back, it really defines us as a person who's very selfish, a person who lacks compassion. I mean, I'm sorry, but the public's in the United States, and it just hurts me to no end of how many people blindly follow yeah. that. Yeah blindly follow that no scripture and, and and listen to a fellow that that says things that violates the word of god yes, and, and they get so wound up and, and get so moved because he kisses a disabled child oh, yes. and he kisses babies politicians do that Amen. but he doesn't warn them about hell and he tells them, hey, the way to heaven is to follow, take the sacraments and, and be sprinkled in the Catholic Church. And you'll be all right. Somebody read something the other day and told me, I don't know, I didn't see this, I don't know if it's true or not, uh, but somebody told me the other day that they were reading, I think they're reading in the paper somewhere, something that he had said that an atheist didn't have to believe in God to go to heaven. Listen, and you and I have the truth. You and I, we know the truth. Amen. We've got it. It's right here. Preacher, I can't make it on Tuesday night. Okay. What are you doing on Thursday afternoon? There's people in your neighborhood. There's people at Walmart. 
There's people at the gas station. Everywhere you go, there's people that need the gospel. And every one of those people you meet have a soul. And if you forbear, then you don't care. Now that's the Bible picture. I said there's three ifs that will define you. If you faint, you're a weakling, you're a quitter. All right. If you forbear, then you are selfish and you lack compassion on other people. Look at number three. If thou sayest, Behold, we knew it not. Doth not he that pondereth the heart consider it? And he that keepeth thy soul, doth not he know it? And shall not he render to every man according to his works? This verse describes a person who professes ignorance. Ignorance. This world is filled with people that won't excuse themselves with the saying of, I don't know, or I didn't know that, or I don't know how. I, you know, I can't. It, the truth of the matter is all a form of excuse making. Excuse making. Uh, it's, it's a real weak argument for the child of God and really for anybody in our day. To say, well, I didn't know that. I wasn't aware of that. Wait a minute, we live in the information age. Amen. There's all kinds of useless information available, but there is some information available that's good. Yes, we, we've got access to the Word of God. Uh, God sent His Son to die for us, and then He gave us and preserved for us His eternal Word, and we've got it, we can hold it in our hands, there's nobody that can't get a copy of it. Nobody can say, I can't afford it. There's too many places to give you a copy. Right. And listen, if anybody wants a Bible, we'll give them a Bible. Right. We'll do it. Don't come up and say, well, I, I just don't have one. Look, even the Mormons will give you a copy of their falsehood and the Book of Mormon. Hey, we'll give you the truth. You've got the truth. We have the word of God. And not only that, but man, this, this country's been saturated and inundated with the preaching of the word of God. Now, I admit to you, there's not much of it anymore. Not much of it today. But we've got it. Here it is. Hey, there's a lot of it printed on billboards. Scripture. There's a lot of it printed on these little signs in people's front yards, okay? It's there. And for somebody to come along and say, well, I just didn't know that. I didn't know how important it was. Well, you know, I don't, I don't know how. Wait a minute, you don't know how to do what? Now, does the Bible not promise that God will supply all your need? Now, either that word, that verse is true or it's not true. And if he'll supply all your need, and if you need to know, he'll... He'll educate you if you want it. And I said this morning, even if you can't read, that's fine. You can find it now and people will read it to you, all right? They, they, they'll read it to you. You can listen to it driving down the road, going to work, going to Walmart, going wherever you go. You can listen to the Word of God. They'll read it to you. It's available. There's no way we can go through life. So I didn't know that. I wasn't aware of that. I, I think sometimes there's a lot of Christians that are laying out of church thinking, well, if I don't go, I won't know, and that'll give me an excuse. I don't think that's going to work too well. Now, the Bible says right here in this verse, if you falsify, if you uh, think for a moment you can remove any guilt or any responsibility from yourself by lying and professing ignorance, you're going to meet that at the judgment seat of Christ. I didn't know. Look. Look, if you will, right there. Doth not he know it? Who? He that keepeth thy soul. Well, who's that talking about? Oh, come on. Don't tell me. You know, don't give me that. I mean, who keeps your soul? There's only one. There's only one that keeps your soul. Doth not he know it? He knows what he knows about it. God knows you. God knows what you know. God knows what you don't know. Don't don't business, give us that business. Well, I, 
I didn't know anything. Can you imagine standing before God? Standing before God and giving that excuse. Well, now, Lord, I just didn't know it. I can just see him saying, wait just a second. Remember on such and such a date when you were sitting in such and such a place in the church and this fellow was preaching. Hey, by the way, let me show you. And he clicks it. And there that guy is preaching you exactly what you said I didn't know. What are we going to say? What are we going to say in that day? Three ifs that'll define you. Hey, what do you want to be? How do you want to be known? How do you want to be known? You know, I, I'm amazed at some people that are shy and retiring and never want the limelight unless they can have all of somebody's attention. Then they're ready to do anything, anything stupid. I mentioned to you watching America's Got Talent, and there is some amazing talent on there, but there's also been numerous ones that was amazing that they'd even attempt to get in front of somebody and call what they did talent. I mean, really and truly. People get up to sing, you know, okay, that sounds good in the shower, but friend, you ain't in the shower, all right? You're on national television. Uh, you know, uh, all these things. Hey, wait a minute. They'll do that. Why? I just want attention on me. Hey, listen, my friend. How do you want to be known? You want to be known as, as a Christian. How do you want to be known? You want to be known as a weakling. You want to be known as a quitter. That one that quits when it gets a little tough. Is that the way you want to be known? Can you imagine... Uh, what would have happened had uh, Adoniram Judson quit? Hey, it was tough. But he didn't quit. Wait a minute, there's another fellow. Remember this guy? Originally, he was known as Saul, but his name changed, and he, he's more well known as Paul. What if he had quit? Well, he didn't have it that tough. I mean, you haven't read, all right? Yeah, he had it. He had faced adversity, but he didn't quit. How about you as a Christian? How do you want to be known? You want to be known as the one that fainted in the day of battle? You want to be known as a weakling, a quitter, one that bailed out? Hey, you want to be known as the one that forbear, held back, didn't give everything, didn't give your best to try to keep people out of hell? Is that the way you want to be known? You want to be known as a liar. One that says, well, I didn't know that. When you really did know it, and you know it, and God knows it. By the way, if that's the only ones that do, that's enough. Amen. That's enough. How do you want to be known? I, I think of First Baptist Church, Halton City. I don't want our church to be known as a church that quit. Amen. I, don't want, I don't want to be known that way. Folks that just gave up and said, well, it's going to be tough. Let's, let's, let's back off, you know. Well, let's not make any waves. Let's not stand for righteousness. Let's not stand for the truth of the Word of God. Let's not stand for principle. Let's just back down. I mean, we don't want to attract any undue attention. I tell you, I admire that Miss Davis yonder in Kentucky that stood up and said, Amen. I won't do that. I'll not put my name on that Amen. certificate. Because I believe it's wrong. Amen. So, well, she was obligated to do it. By who? Yeah, come on. Yeah. Folks, I'm tell you something. There's a higher law than the Supreme yes, Court. Yes, That's right. Amen. There's just a higher law. Yeah. Much higher law. Right. Uh, so she'll lose her job. She might. She might. But wait a minute. She's not going to be known as a quitter. If she sticks with it. Hey, I, I don't want our church to be known as what I don't want our church to be known as selfish and uncaring, no compassion on anybody else. I don't want us to be known that way. I, I don't want the world to look and say, man, those people over there, they don't care. They don't care. Don't want that.
And I sure don't want us to be known as a liar. Well, they preach a bunch of stuff and they say a bunch of stuff that's not true. I tell you what, everything we preach, we can point to the Word of God and say, this book says it is right. true. Amen. Amen. It is true. Three ifs that will define you. How about you? Would you bow your head tonight? Every head bowed and every eye closed. How about you? Three very simple things. If you faint, if you forbear, and if you falsify. How about it? Hey, are any of those knocking on your door tonight? Are any of those applicable to you? Have you kind of fell by the wayside a little bit? Oh, I know, we've got excuses. We've made excuses. Wait a minute, how about you? And let's just be honest. Be honest with yourself, honest with God. How about you? Boy, I don't want it, I don't want to be known that way. I don't want you to be known that way. We need to look at ourselves and let them say, hey, there's some things that need to change. Maybe you need to come tonight and ask God to forgive you. Maybe you need to strengthen some resolve, some principles. Say, I'm going to do what I ought to do. I'm going to give my best to keep people out of hell. I'm going to give my best. I'm not just going to keep on doing what I've been doing. Hey, I, I, I'm going to stick with it when adversity comes. I'm not going to get out in that crowd that lies. I, I'm just not going to even get in that situation. Heavenly Father, I pray tonight you deal with hearts. Help us to see ourselves, dear God, as you see us. Help us be honest with ourselves. To walk with you. To be faithful to you. For us in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.